good news is uh, Jax and I are back on the road here, heading south towards Joplin, Missouri. Unfortunately, the weather's not necessarily cooperating for outdoor filming at the moment right now. But we'll manage. So it's not raining this far south. I just pulled off this Super 8 motel here, and uh, there's this sign that says trucks pay $10 to park. You see that sometimes uh, at, at motels, because sometimes, like if it's off season or something, they're not making a lot of money. They got all this wasted lot right here, so they charge $10 for you to overnight park, you know, because the long haul truckers that have the, the bed, they don't need the hotel services or anything. Uh, they just pay ten dollars to park. It's been a long time since I've seen a large roadside attraction anything. Well, <laughs> we got this guy. This is a car dealership over here and you got this old western cartoon guy with uh, two guns. So there you go. I'm just gonna take it easy. I'm gonna keep driving. I got a campground in mind by the water. Um, unfortunately, you guys know me. I just don't like to film in the rain. If it's pouring down rain, Man, I gotta get the umbrella and protect all of my camera gear and microphones and everything, and that's just no fun. So, uh, we'll just kind of see how things go. I do have to go grab some supplies over at Walmart. I need uh, pizza and barley pop, and then I'm gonna go find a campground. Man, I love traveling. It is definitely in my blood to be a nomad. We're here in the town of Rich Hill. And I googled this and I want to go check it out over here. We're going to go behind the city hall here in the town and look at this mammoth coal shovel. You can walk and stand inside this massive coal shovel. Uh, this one weighs six million eight hundred thousand pounds. It's a beast. Look at this. <laughs> it's a big shovel. So this town, uh, they actually, there's a sign over here that says that they brought it in uh, by railroad over there uh, back when this town was really big with coal. Quite massive, actually. And right over here off to the left, they got a little mini-me version. Still huge. So that's the town of Rich Hill. Now, uh, I can't remember the name of the lake I'm trying to find. Well, while I was at Walmart, I stopped in and got rain gear. I bought a new umbrella because my other one mysteriously vanished. Umbrella, a full rain suit, and I got a new pair of boots. So, I'm prepared for the rain since it's gonna be thunderstorms and raining for the next three days here on the road, so. But for right now, <laughs> look at checks. As I've been parking lately, he just goes up to the dashboard. It's a really weird spot for him to hang out. <laughs> Let's see what he's up to. What are you up to, guy? What's really going on, guy man? Yeah, yeah, okay. Ready to go? Then go places? Okay, we'll go places. Well, I think we're here, everybody. Jacks, we're here. Welcome to Bushwhacker Lake Conservation Area, Missouri Conservation Department. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a lake over here, oh sorry, clean the windshield, and then you just got these little campsites here with not much in them. Hmm. I don't usually do this kind of stuff, um, I don't know if I mentioned, I am 24 miles off the highway, 24 miles to get back on route, so theoretically I'm 48 miles just out here to get to a free campground. Don't usually do that. If you factor in the gas sometimes, it could even be cheaper just to go to a paid campground. But hey, this one has a lake and, and we'll see. All right, I know I look like an absolute goof with the umbrella and rain gear, but hey, I'm making it happen, right? <laughs> I would say they have four spots for RVs. I got one of the last three. Uh, somebody's camping over there in an RV. I count eight 
eight fire rings for like 10 camping. So uh, that's cool. Again, I already walked around and looked at the rules and I didn't see anything posted about how long you can stay here, but I would just say 14 days. It's kind of the unwritten rule, but I'll take you guys down to the water. So as you can see, they got a dumpster here for your garbage. There's the random fire rings for uh, tent camping out there. Here's a little inlet of the lake here with lots of lily pads and uh, I don't know if you can see them, but there's a lot of bugs. A lot of bugs flying around down here. Here's your fishing limits. Largemouth bass, 12 to 15 inches. Crappy, 30. Catfish, 4. <laughs> Again, there's that same Missouri sign as the last place I was at. Uh, area closed 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. except for campers. And they have one vault toilet over there. Look at this. Little path to the water. Out on a little dock. Hey, not too bad. Not too bad at all. I actually waited two hours uh, to come in outside because it was just pouring when I first got here. And now it's just kind of lightly raining. But this is nice that they put a little covered area in. Oh wow, a lot of, a lot of, I think those are wasp n nests there. Lovely. But they're up there and I'm, I'm down here. And I think they're dormant this time of year anyway. Jeez, it's almost, is it fall? I think we're really, 21st, okay. Yeah, we're, also, I really like this rain gear. This, it's made by Coleman. The pants and the jacket uh, is 20 bucks at Walmart, and I'm gonna get lots of use out of this. So, although I don't really feel like playing in the rain necessarily today, I think mostly we're gonna do some, uh, as the umbrella falls, some uh, interior inside activities for the day. But you should know, I don't, I don't really have any plans right now, guys. I'm kind of moving more, well, I will be moving more east than south at least, because uh, it's still a little too warm down south, like in Florida. So, I mean, I'll get there eventually, but I got a lot of fun stops I want to make along the way and everything. So, yeah, Bush Whacker Lake. <laughs> I actually practiced saying that over and over so that I wouldn't crack up like a schoolboy, but. The name of a lake with Bush and Whacker in the title, Bushwhacker. I just want you to know, I feel like I'm actually maturing, be able to keep a straight face and say Bushwhacker. So yeah, we'll just do some uh, in indoor updates here for a little bit. A uh, couple things I wanted to mention. Many of you remember a couple years ago, I did that video about uh, the, the apps that I think like, like must-haves or ones I wanted you to kind of have. And I, I have a new one to add to that list real quick. Not ne necessarily a must-have, but if you enjoy free over-the-air TV and you have the wind-up and you can direct it, this is one of those essentials for getting free TV and it's available on the App Store for Android and uh, Apple. Okay, so this one I want to show you is right here called TV Towers. And it's a great app. It's going to position me right now. I think it's already got me. There, you see that arrow is basically saying where I'm at. And then down here, uh, this is towards jo uh, Joplin. You can see there's NBC, PBS, ABC. It's telling you where the actual antennas are. So you can direct it. Now, if you look carefully, you can see the, the yellow pin where it's facing. I can't... If I put the phone flat like this and start rotating it, that pin is going to change direction. And that pin is telling me where the front of my phone is aiming. So as I turn this, I have to turn it all the way. I can't do it. Hang on. Okay, now I'm straight up and down and I can show you this better. But as I rotate the phone, that needle in the middle is changing. And as soon as I get it facing towards where most of the antennas are that I want to reach, where the front of the phone is facing, so which, which would be back towards my arm. Does that make sense? See the the pin is saying that the front of the phone is facing the antennas. So that would be back this way towards my hand. So then essentially I would roll up my an antenna, put it up, and then this arrow right here, I want facing the direction that my hand just was. So I would pull it out and I would physically turn it so that the arrow is that way. It's down right now. Uh, I'm getting ready to watch TV. I want to track, track the news, but the app is really good for finding those stations. Maybe there's other stations back the other way that you want to reach, but for the directional antennas, that app works great. Now, obviously I might be too far away to reach those antennas, like mileage wise, or there might be something in the way. But we'll go ahead and go to the menu, slide down to channels, and click find channels and let this automatic system uh, search through and see if it can pick up any of those. It can actually be really exciting for me on the road to 
continue to travel and continue to get new TV stations. I don't know if that makes sense, but there's always going to be ABCs and NBCs and Foxes in all different areas of the country. And I never know which affiliate channel I'm going to get or like which sports events going to go, but you get the local news and stuff like that. So as a traveler, it's actually really, really exciting to get live free over the air TV through an antenna and not have to pay a subscription or anything. Because even with Dish Network, I mean, I could never get local channels anywhere. It was always just the, the paid stuff. So I find this really essential. But as you know, I also love my Netflix. And I think $10 a month is a bargain to have basically unlimited high definition TV stream as long as I have internet. And I do have internet here at Bushwhacker Lake as well. There's no way my old omnidirectional antenna would have found 12 channels. Yeah, just here. completed. I mean, there we go. The TV. Host. I'm just going to mute that, but I find that really crazy that I got 12 channels way out here in the middle of nowhere. Good old grit TV. You know, it's just something extra. It's fun to have when it's when it's raining and you're kind of stuck indoors watching some TV. And like I said, it's free. I love that over-the-air free TV. I mean, I can't believe I did that satellite dish thing for like 14 months. What a rip-off. <laughs> so one of the things that's different about the rain here in the Midwest is that it's a very warm rain. Like, for instance, here's one of the tricky parts about boondocking if it's rainy and warm and there's thunderstorms also, but it's 87 degrees and raining, which means I can't open any of my windows. Like in the bedroom, my whole mattress would be soaked because the air and the wind is blowing the rain in sideways. My TV would get wet. So I can't really open any windows. So I'm kind of stuck on running the generator, which is fine. I'll do that just to keep it. I, I mean, I have to keep it under 95 degrees in here. It got really, really warm today. It's ridiculous. It's so late in the year. So just one of the other challenges that rain rain has, as opposed to if I were in an RV park hooked into power, I could just keep the top thing running on the, like the fan and that would, that would circulate uh, the air, but we can't really do it when it's raining. So that is kind of tricky. Um, just so you know, not complaining. I'm just saying that's one of the differences between rain in the, in the Midwest as opposed to rain back home in Washington where I'm from. But let's see, we're, we're stocked up pretty well in here. Yeah, we've got ice cream and chimichangas and pizza, tots, got, got everything. And ooh, Eric, no. You know how many times I have forgot soda in, in my RV freezers? Probably, probably close to a dozen times in seven years. You would think I would learn to set a timer. That was close, that could have been, as, it is a pain in the butt to clean out frozen coke out of an RV freezer. Just a pain in the butt. I'm really glad I opened that freezer to look and see what I would have... Boy, no idea how close we were. That, that's a cold can though. We get the oven uh, preheated here for my health pie for lunch. All right, there we go, Jax. Some for me, none for you. Um, excuse me? Are, are we watching Cat? I, I, I was gonna watch TV. It looks like we're watching Cat instead. That, okay, thanks. <laughs> Actually, I think we'll do Netflix instead. <laughs> Some of you have asked me uh, what I watch, what I enjoy watching on Netflix, so I'll just go through here. Uh, Wentworth, Star Trek Next Generation, Hell on Wheels, Archer, Forensic Files, that 70s show, Sons of Anarchy, Family Guy and The Walking Dead. That's it. That was, what was that? Ten shows, I think, that I go through. I don't. I don't have a whole lot of variations. But yeah, do some that '70s show today. First day of deer season. Um, season. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, I killed half of it, saving the other half for tomorrow. I know I don't make RV life look very exciting. That's not really what I'm trying to do. So it's just that you kind of have to adapt to the weather on the road and the unexpectedness of, of what's going to break down and how long it's going to be in the shop and how you do chase the weather. You know, that's really important. Um, but it's, today's Monday the 18th. So we are literally hitting fall in a few days here, and already I'm like... 
okay. Unfortunately, the weather for the next three days in this area is still over 90 degrees the next few days. So that's very strange. Very strange. You can kind of see why there's no rush to get south for me. We'll just we'll just do we'll just keep going east. We'll just keep going east and see what we find. So uh, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys on the next adventure in a couple days. Bye bye.